I'm at the district in Tustin. And as you can see, I am enjoying a Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Mm. Chocolate fudge brownie and strawberry cheesecake, two of my favorite flavors. So um, let me show you. This is my backpack. I'm waiting for uh, my interviewee for the documentary. So while we're waiting, I am enjoying um, some ice cream. So, and this is, you know, the district here. So, like we talked about earlier, um, regarding um, here, regarding um, story writing. So, what we're going to do is, you know, just talk about like you know building a story, getting the um, um, characters and your plots just to build that art to get your story, you know, on paper before you start writing it. So that's what we're going to talk about: just character building. You know, getting everything that you have in mind, what you want your character or characters to be, and we're going to create the art for it. So we're going to get to that tip, and then so uh, to this week. So that's what we're going to discuss. But we'll finish that uh, conversation after the interview. But for now, I am going to enjoy my mm, ice cream. Talk to you later. That was some good ice cream. Okay, let's start building your art. So in, I'm going to use that word a lot. I'm going to be repetitive saying arc. And I, so for a reason. So we're going to, you know, before you even think about creating it, what you want to do to at least get that started, you know, just take notes. Um, to create the arc, you have to know what your story is about. What is your plot? Let's say Johnny um, meets a monster and the monster is going to destroy the earth but Johnny's a superhero that saves the earth and the people okay but superhero doesn't necessarily have to mean um, someone in a cape someone with magical powers Johnny can be an ordinary Joe Schmuckatelli you know and he just you know happens to know what to do and how to um, do things to destroy the monster so you, that, that's just, for example the board you know i'm improvising now so that is your storyline that is your plot so johnny's the hero monster you're you know pr your protagonist and the monster is the bad guy the antagonist so that's where you have to ha create um you know your characters and that's where you want to um you know start your story with and that's where your the beginning of, of your story is important because you want to draw your audience and capture the audience and give them something to want to read like oh you know I want to know more about Johnny I want to know more about him and I want to know more about the monster and I want to know why the monsters here and you know so you gotta you know write keynotes you have to you know make sure that your idea sells not you know selling not like you know in stores but selling you know to capture the reader to keep them interested so improvising going to be repetitive with a lot of the words that I um, will use so let's get started okay so you want to take notes in and or make an outline and of the outline is too intimidating for a lot of people it can be so don't worry about creating an actual outline you know think of it as taking notes you know um, chapters uh, one you don't one through four for example you don't really want to you know really get to that point of chapter but if that helps you you know you know start to build your story and where you want things to grow and to escalate so you can use chapters or not or just you know just jot down notes with bullet points if you will so you want to talk about Johnny you know what kind of a person he is um, what does he do for a profession you know um, you know is he working you know is he on vacation you know build that character up you know create Johnny create his background then when you get to that point you could be you know you could have multiple um, bullet points you know however many you feel is needed for Johnny 
Okay, so you stop there. And now, you know, Johnny is your protagonist. The protagonist, you know, is the hero, the good guy in the story. Male, female, protagonist. And you have your antagonist, which is the bad guy, the, the person that you really would love to dislike, okay? Well, that's the monster. So now you want to create a background story for your monster. What is it like? Describe it. Um, what are its traits? Uh, where did it come from? Why is it here on Earth? Why does it want to destroy? So you really want to build that. Yes, that's important because you, you kind, to, kind of want to know what its purpose is. So, you know, create a background, create a personality with Johnny, and then create that with the monster. Then once you get those bullet points to the side and you have everything that you need to um, make them interesting, and then now you want to know what the plot is. Okay, why after you just you know why is the monster destroying Earth? What is it looking for? And then you then you want to explain that you know in notes to just kind of like again take bullet points. So when you get the idea of why you want it, you know to destroy the Earth or and the people in it, and then you have that, and then you take bring Johnny back in, and then you want to describe why Johnny wants to stop it, you know, why does he feel the monster is a threat? What can he do? Is he afraid of it? You know, is he afraid at first and he grows, you know, courage, you know, somewhere down the line. But now after you've created the personality, now you want to create an action, you know, the purpose of, you know, the monster, the purpose of Johnny within the story. So when you get those notes down, if you know, you have an idea of why, okay, why that they are in existence. And then you put that to the side and then think of it this way in the arc. In the, you got the background story, you've got the, you know, of Johnny and you build his character up. And then meantime, you also in like somewhere between the arc from the bottom here, about three quarters of the way up, you're going to talk about your monster. You know, you want to give the background story. Um, yeah, so either a quarter way up, depending on how long, <coughs> pardon me, but depending on how long you want to, you know, describe it, I wouldn't get too long because then you get to the point where, all right, get to the point. Okay, enough with this. You know, kind of don't keep it short and sweet, but don't elongate it. Okay. So between like the bottom to three quarters of the way up of, on the arc, you kind of want to build and escalate, you know, the purpose of Johnny, you know, why is he important to his friends and society? You kind of want to build on that. And that's where the monster comes in, you know, where you introduce it. And then you introduce the meeting and, you know, the discovery uh, of it, the monster and, you know, what Johnny and other characters in your story, what happens you know, when the monster lands on Earth or comes to Earth and the first town he destroys, the first place or the first encounter, what have you. So from the bottom to like three quarters of the way up, you kind of want to squeeze all of that in there. So I've had um, writers say, well, that's a small line. Okay, don't visualize the art as, arc as I'm showing it to you. It You know, it literally is not th like this. I'm just that's just an idea for you to visualize an arc, you know, in your mind, your arc can be, you know, tall, you know, like the, the one in St. Louis, you know? So, I mean, just don't take the visual of the arc that I'm showing you literally. It just, you get the idea of, you know, how, depending on how long you want to write the story. So that's the beginning of the arc. Okay. That's the first part. So remember that. So, you want to get the character background for both protagonist and antagonist. You want to, you know, introduce them. You want to give them a personality and you, you and why, you know, they are what they are, who they are. You know, I want to know, readers want to know the background story. What purpose do they have? And, you know, why are they significant? Okay. And then, you know, and after that, you kind of want to, you know, introduce them into the story to where things occur to where they lead up to a meeting point. And, you know, the the reaction, the shock value, the, the you know, the 
ah, uh, you know, uh, value. I mean, that's where you start to build your characters and right to where they meet and how they cut paths cross, okay, and how you introduce them into the world. That's where the beginning of the arc is. So work on that, think about that, let that sink in and, you know, take notes and, you know, take bullet points. Um, so that's key, that's very important because you really can't begin a story without a backdrop because the last, it's like watching a bad movie. It's like, you know, like the, you know, why are they here? Who is that character? Where did he come from? You know, you do that in a movie and I know like there have been scripts and I've written that were completely lost and um, I've had producers, you know, look at it and people, other writers go, um, we, you know, when we go into a critique session and when we just walk, go over it, they're like, where is this? This is missing and I have to fill in the blanks. So it's like that with the book as well because um, this is your opportunity to really explain things. It's not shortened like a script that that I write, you know, everything is shortened, but here you really have to explain yourself to really draw in the reader and to keep them focused. So, you know, get started writing now, get your characters, however many characters you want in your story, you know, and then take down bullet points and, um, you know, see what I mean. And then we'll continue on from there later. Okay. Hey, do you remember what we talked about earlier about, you know, writing a story, you know, getting a plot ready, you know, to build your arc and we discussed, you know, uh, an idea, you know, of how to, you know, create your arc, but it always starts with a plot, you know, you would have to take notes, you know, bullet points or, um, you know, an outline, you know, so for me, I don't like outlines because it's too technical and, um, but I do my outline, if you will, differently. So I do it with notes and bullet points. So I wrote one, you know, just to give it an idea. I think I'm gonna put it up close and see. See how I did that? I just have like a plot, the title, the plot, and I have the characters down there. So that's, you know, just to give you an idea of a basic, you know, just this, this is a very, very short version of, you know, you know of how you could get your nose started but it's it's an idea and we talked about a monster and uh, the you know the good guy so let's we're gonna recap for a second so to uh, before we even talk about creating the arc and building the arc um, you want to create a plot you want to write a plot of what your whole story is going to be about um, it doesn't have to be 20 pages. It just has to be one short page or paragraph or what have you. But, you know, you just put your plot, your idea of your story down first. And I'll give you an example. Um, is this going to be, um, this, I just created a story, so um, I will be improvising for the most part. But this is just a mock story that it, I thought uh, we'd use for an example um, to get your plot going. So um, the name of my story will be Batty Monster Crushes the Earth. Okay. And um, the plot of the story is mad scientist discovers batty monster laying eggs in a cave and then proceeds to earn its trust with a bag of cheeseburgers then the military discovers the nest and sets it ablaze destroying every egg the scientist is angry vowing to destroy the military for what it had done the monster becomes enraged after it discovering its nest was destroyed and it goes on a stomping rampage then protagonist Johnny good guy is a civilian doctor and a triathlon competitor who works at the military base hospital he learns about the monster from watching the news then at work he overhears the conversation conversation between two high-ranking officers then he proceeds to do an investigation himself um, over the situation on his own <clears throat> pardon me and produces his findings to his and um, to his um, 
gathers his findings and produces them um, evidence and and he gives it to his most trustworthy friends, Mikey and Laura. Together, they plot to destroy the monster and um, they turn to Dr. Screwy, who helps, who betrays the team, um, leading, having led them on, um, that he wants to help destroy the monster, but as time goes by, he, you know, Johnny just learns that the doctor's intentions are opposite. Cities crumble, people die, one of the protagonists I have here will die, um, familiar characters will die, my new characters are saved and many will die. Um, the doctor will die, uh, the, there, there will be planes filling the sky and they will cause various wounds um, to the monster but the bullets are really not effective. So there is a laser beam hidden in a cave that is discovered and that is what is will be used to kill the monster. Okay, so that's just, you notice I had to put my glasses on the end of my nose because for two reasons. One, I'm getting old and two, I can't see where the crap and I have to put the paper up to my face in order for me to read it. And no, I won't get bifocals. So anyway, so that's the plot of my story. Just a, that's just a general idea. Don't forget, not a real story, just using it for an example. So in the first paragraph, I have two characters named. The doctor who discovers the monster and the monster Batty itself. So Batty is devastated, upset, angry, pissed off that his nest or its nest has been destroyed. Then the scientist, Dr. Screwy, is pissed off because he made friends with the monster. And he's pissed off at the military because they destroyed the nest. So, okay, now those two, and, well, and don't forget, Dr. Screwy wants to um, destroy, you know, just destroy the monster, uh, the military for what they've done to the monster's nest. Okay, so let me ask you a question here. So here's a tricky question. So there's three, pretty much, okay, there's, th there's three main things happening in the, you know, the first sentence of, of about, you know, what my plot is, what it's about. So we have the monster who's pissed off because its nest was destroyed. And then we have the mad scientist who's pissed off at the military because the military destroyed the nest. But then there's the military who discovered the nest of eggs and destroys the eggs. You know, who would be the antagonist uh, in, for that part? Would it be the monster, the doctor, and the military? Well, that's true, okay. Monster, because it's an antagonist, because it's destroying cities, killing people. The doctor, the antagonist, because it's, he's pissed off and he wants to, you know, get even with the military. And then you have the military who, you know, like any other, any other movie, finds something and the government goes, oh, what the hell, freaks out, doesn't want to really study it, they destroy things first. So you could have your antagonist there, but for me, how I would write the story to fit the plot, to fit these characters with the storyline, I would make Dr. Screwy the main antagonist because he befriended the monster and he got his friend, you know, his friend's, new friend's um, nest was destroyed and he's pissed off because he just said, Damn you, government, you always, you know, want to destroy, you act first before thinking. But does that make the military bad? Well, it depends on how I write it. So I could make the military an antagonist because, you know, of them just acting before they thought or try to research. But no, I, it, it all depends. So like for, for, for now, we'll pretend that I'm going to not make the military you know, antagonist, because I would probably write 
to describe why the military is not and what made them want to destroy the nest. And so I would probably put that in the story but for example if you were to write this to say this was your story you could write it however you want to but you know so if you see where I'm going with the characters here and what I had you know created here you know what is bad you know what actions you know caused you know the big you know action you know feature of the story um, is, is, is that for that reason okay so that's the you know going on in the story but there's also another part of the plot um, Johnny good guy is a civilian doctor and a triathlon competitor who works at the military base hospital he, he learns about the monster by watching it on the news um, then at work he overhears two high-ranking officers talk about uh, the nest and what happened then he himself proceeds Johnny to investigate the situation because he's curious and he didn't like what he had heard uh, from the military because he overheard them but he didn't hear the full story he just heard the conversation between the two officers so he takes it upon himself to investigate but what he finds he presents to his two colleagues, uh, Mikey and Laura. And the three of them together, you know, decide to um, destroy the monster. But th before they, you know, really get into it, they do their investigation first to get more information. But they need, and they will all agree, they need to stop the monster because the monster is killing thousands, millions of people destroying the cities. So they need help. So who could they turn to? Another colleague who was a scientist, a biologist, but they turned to Dr. Screwy, the scientist from the first part of the plot, but they are unaware of everything Dr. Screwy had accomplished by befriending the monster and vowing to get back at the military, you know. They're, so they are unaware at this point of the doctor's true intentions. But as time goes by, the doctor slowly reveals, you know, his intentions and that's and things take a twist there. Okay. So that's just the whole idea. So now you get the whole idea of what's going on and so like the first part it kind of just, you know, it describes what I want to happen, you know, for the, from the antagonist point of view. And then the second part of the plot that, you know, the, what I want to include in the story is pretty much from the protagonist point of view. So I've got to write, you know, now that I've got the plot idea here, um, and oh, let me read this one more thing. So what you need to add into the story to mix into the plot, cities crumble, people die. One of the protagonists will die. Um, I will introduce uh, familiar characters. Um, I will create characters enough to where um, they will be introduced and you get to know them briefly and they die. And you'll have a lot of like extras, if you will, like minute characters that will be saved. And they will have like a very, you know, very, very brief, um, you know, background, like, you know, introduction, you know, like little boy, mommy at the store, what have you, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's something like that. Um, but, you know, like in movies, extras who just are at random people who just stand there watch destruction and don't run but have to get saved you know by someone like a running military soldier and just getting them out of harm's way just in the nick of time those kind of characters many will be saved and many will die um so i want the the doctor dr screwy will eventually die i have written by the monster he dies by the monster how i would do that you know, you know, create that, I'm not sure yet, but that's the idea I want. So I want to make sure that I want him to die, you know, in the hands of the monster. So I want, I put that down so I know when I get to that point of where I want to put that into the story, I can, um, you know, you know, create a scene where that happens. But then at the t as the story goes along, I could change my mind. But for right now, as I'm just creating the plot, that's what I would like to happen. 
that I want to write about planes filling the sky and shooting at the monster. Um, they wound it, but the bullets are really not effective to, to take it down. But though, how would I destroy the monster? Well, I want to, you know, incorporate a secret laser beam rocket is found. And that's what's going to be used to destroy the monster. So, then the world is saved. Okay, so that's the idea of, of when I say put your plot down. Just get a general, you know, you know, sentence, paragraphs here. Just a general idea of what you would like your story to be. Now, keep in mind, this is what you have now. But as you start to write and start to put your story together, um, you know, with scenes um, and dialogue, things may change. But don't change it right away. Write what you've got here now, your ideas here, okay? And then you can change it when you get to your second manuscript, your second draft, your third draft, or what have you. But for the first draft, this is a rough draft, so you kind of want to get your bases down like that. And then you want to have characters that you want to build, like Johnny Goodguy, the main character, the main protagonist, and um, Mikey Meltdown, his um, co his associate, his... Uh, co-worker and then you have Laura Hoofhaven the other co-worker his associate and um, then you have Batty Monster Dr. Screwy the mad scientist who befriends the monster and then you can add characters you know they don't like you know say General Sergeant Hammer and and another uh, major Hoofenhanger you know just Anything you want, just your right now, General One, Major One, Sergeant Two, Sergeant One. So you just kind of get the idea of like what characters that you really want to highlight as your story goes along. But they can also be, you know, disposable, if you will. Like they can die in the story and they, they have a purpose and they do certain things, you know, in your story. But you wouldn't be too heartbroken if you killed them off or you can make them an you know unexpected you know hero so like i said just you got your plot and now you got to start building your character list so that's what i've done here then you want to if you, you know once you get that done you can take each character and then you can put you know you know um character traits to them you know characteristics to your traits uh, you know to your characters like um johnny good guy is going to be six foot three Blonde hair, blue eyes, very hot looking in the face and in the body because he's a triathlon, um, you know, competitor. And plus he's a doctor, so he's very smart. And then Mikey Meltdown, his, you know, um, co-worker, another doctor that he works with. And he's a surgeon. You can put him down as a surgeon, you know, and, and uh, but he's shorter. He's like 5'10", stumpy, goatee, glasses, very smart, but he's not athletic but he's quick, you know, just examples like that, you know, so, and that's how you would want to start building your character to add to your story. So this is part one of getting your story started and, you know, to make, to be the basis, the foundation for your arc. So that's part one of what you want to do. So now we will talk next um, about, you know, creating your how to get your plot to break it down into you know to into sections to expand to get your story and to where to um, really get your characters to come alive to give them personality so that's going to be in the next clip what we call part two so stay tuned and continue watching uh, the next one and then we will wrap that part up with the art because there's so much into creating the art and so much into creating your story and dialogue this is just the beginning so we're going to start from the beginning